Let's see about the definition of hemophilia. Hemophilia is usually an inherited, congenital bleeding disorder characterized by a lack of blood clotting factors, especially factors 8, hemophilia A or classic hemophilia, and factor 9, hemophilia B or Christmas disease. It is an X-linked disorder primarily affecting males. Females act as carriers. Few have factor 11 deficiency, hemophilia C or Rosenthal syndrome. History of hemophilia. Hemophilia is one of the oldest described genetic diseases. An inherited bleeding disorder in males was recognized in Talmudic records of the 2nd century. Hemophilia has often been called the royal disease. This is because Queen Victoria, Queen of England was a carrier and many generations of this family suffered from hemophilia. They passed the disease on to the Spanish, German and Russian royal families. The modern history of hemophilia began in 1803 with the description of hemophilic kindred by John Otto, followed by the first review of hemophilia by Nass in 1820. In 1952, Christmas disease was described and named after the surname of the first patient who was examined in detail. This disease was distinct from hemophilia because mixing plasma from a patient with true hemophilia and one with Christmas disease, corrected the clotting time, thus, hemophilia A and B were differentiated. Incidence The most common type of hemophilia, hemophilia A, occurs in approximately 1 in 5,000 males and accounts for approximately 80 to 85 percent of hemophilia cases. Race Hemophilia shows no apparent racial predilection and appears in all ethnic groups. Sex Both hemophilia A and B are X-linked recessive disorders, therefore, they affect males almost exclusively. Reports of affected females are rare, and these cases are attributed to extreme lionization or the presence of two independent mutations. Age Significant deficiency in factor 8 or factor the 9th of may be evident in the neonatal period and continue through the life of the affected individual. Classification of hemophilia Hemophilia has been classified into three types as Severe disease, defined as less than 1% factor activity, less than 0.01 international units per ml, generally presents in children younger than 1 year and accounts for 43-70%. Bleeding episodes include spontaneous bleeding, 1-2 episodes per week, predominantly in joints and muscles. Moderate disease, defined as 1 to 5 percent factor activity, 0.010.05 international units per ml, generally presents in children aged 1 2 years and accounts for 15 to 26 percent. Bleeding episodes includes occasional spontaneous bleeding, 1 2 episodes per year. Severe bleeding with trauma, surgery. Mild disease, defined as greater than 5% factor 8 activity, greater than 0.05 international units per ml, generally presents in children older than 2 years and accounts for 15 to 31 percent. Severe bleeding only with major trauma or surgery. Pathophysiology Coagulation consists of two processes, primary and secondary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis involves the aggregation of platelets at an injury site. An initial platelet plug is established and subsequently replaced by a more stable fibrin clot through secondary hemostasis. Secondary hemostasis involves the coagulation cascade a sequence of reactions that ultimately leads to the formation of the stable fibrin clot. Factor 8 and Factor 9 are both part of the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade and are necessary to convert Factor 10 to Factor 10A, the first step of the common pathway. A deficiency or defect in either Factor 8 or Factor 9 decreases the activation Factor 10A, 
impairing subsequent reactions necessary to create fibrin clots. Diagnosis The accurate diagnosis of hemophilia requires the following. Detailed history with particular emphasis on Age of onset of bleeding Site of bleeding Whether bleeding spontaneous slash trauma related Number of episodes slash month or year Target joints, if any Other affected members in the family Complete physical examination with particular care to record range of motion, deformities, if any, and muscle strength at the knees, hips and elbows. Laboratory Investigations Usually, the activated partial thromboplastin time, a PTT, is prolonged. Bleeding times, prothrombin times, and platelet counts are normal. The diagnosis is based on functional assay results for factor 8 and factor 9. Usually, von Willebrand factor, VWF, is also measured. The combination of low factor 8 and low von Willebrand factor may indicate von Willebrand factor deficiency as the primary diagnosis. Because factor 8 and factor 9 are large molecules that do not cross the placenta, the diagnosis can be made at birth by means of quantitative assay of coagulation factors in the cord blood. Early diagnosis of factor 9 deficiency is complicated by the physiologic reduction of vitamin K dependent factors in young infants. Other laboratory evaluations in the patient with hemophilia are a periodic screening for the presence of factor 8 or factor 9 inhibitor and screening for transfusion related or transmissible diseases such as hepatitis and HIV infection. The general principles of care for hemophilia management include Prevention of bleeding should be the goal. Acute bleeds should be treated as early as possible, within two hours, if possible. Home therapy should be used to manage only uncomplicated mild, moderate bleeding episodes. All severe bleeds should be hospitalized. Prior to any invasive procedure, clotting factor or concentrate, DAFP should be given to achieve appropriate factor level. Blood products should be avoided as far as possible. As much as possible, patients should adjust lifestyle to avoid trauma. Patients should be advised to avoid use of drugs affecting platelet function, particularly acetylsalicylic acid and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, except certain COX-2 inhibitors. Paracetamol or acetaminophen are safe alternative to analgesia. Intramuscular injections, difficult phlebotomy, and arterial punctures must be avoided. Regular exercise should be encouraged to promote strong muscle, protect joints, and improve fitness. Prompt, early, appropriate treatment is the key to preventing most complications. Must replace missing coagulation factor, 8 or 9, through the administration of type-specific coagulation concentrates during bleeding episodes. No viral inactivated concentrate exists for hemophilia C. Fresh frozen plasma is given to supply factor 11. Mild and moderate factor 8 deficient hemophiliacs may respond to desmopressin which causes the release of factor 8 from the endothelial stores. It is given in a dose of 0.3 mcg, kg per dose, usually every 24 hours. Antifibrinolytics, such as aminocaproic acid and tranexamic acid, are given as adjunctive therapy for mucosal bleeding to prevent clot breakdown by salivary proteins. Activated prothrombin complex concentrates that have activated factors 7, 9, and X are used when inhibitors, autoantibodies, have developed to bypass factor 8 or 9. In the case of factor 8 inhibitors, porcine factor 8 may also be given. 
supportive therapies. NSAIDs are used to decrease inflammation and arthritic-like pain associated with chronic hemarthrosis. They must be used with caution because some types and higher doses interfere with platelet adhesion. Physical therapy to prevent contractures and muscle atrophy. This includes exercise, whirlpool, and icing. Orthotics to prevent injury to affected joint and to help resolve hemorrhages. Synovectomy, orthopedic surgical intervention to remove damaged synovium in chronically involved joints. Open procedure provides direct visualization of joint and removal of damaged tissue. Arthroscopic, visualization and removal of the joint synovium through the use of an arthroscope. Radionucleotide. Installation of 32P, which removes damaged synovium, usually done through a needle. Research into gene therapy, genetic copies of sequenced factor 8 and 9 molecules are inserted into the body via some type of vector cell to find their way into the human host genetic machinery and begin to produce either factor 8 or factor 9 in deficient patients. Community and home care considerations. Perform a home safety survey to identify potential hazards. Provide teaching and referrals to initiate an infusion therapy program at home when hemorrhage begins. Provide education to family and all caregivers about recognizing and treating bleeds appropriately. Provide emotional support through the provision of educational materials information about support groups, and a list of resources within the community. Educate teachers and other school faculty about the child's special needs.